All right. Um, uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Uh, first of all, happy Cinco de Mayo. Um, for those of you who don't know, today is also uh, the date uh, LinkedIn started. And uh, LinkedIn started on May 5th, uh, 2003, so it's 17 years. And coincidentally, this is also our first uh, Pino meetup, and Pino was started at LinkedIn. Um, so thanks, thanks Uber for choosing such a such an awesome day uh, to have our first meetup. So one of the biggest uh, one of the questions that I often get asked is like, why did we start? Uh, why did we start Pino? Why? What were the other systems that were out there uh, that we uh, that we didn't that we explored? Uh, so today I'm not only going to try to answer those two but also help and encourage others to take a look at what Pino has uh, done at LinkedIn and Uber and uh, take, take that uh, going forward in your companies to actually stretch the landscape of analytics and push the boundaries on what you can do with Pino. A little bit about... Oops. Yeah, a little bit about myself. Um, so um, a decade and a half back, I kind of got into this um, distributed systems. And one of the th key things that got me into this was this quote from Leslie Lamport, where he basically says the distributed system is one where the failure of one, one computer that you didn't really know existed kind of renders your system completely un unusable. This kind of, kind of got my attention and I started my journey into distributed, building distributed systems. And over the last 10 years, I've built uh, Espresso, Apache Helix, uh, Apache Pino, and Third Eye. And I hope I can uh, get to build many more like this. Uh, before answering why we built uh, Pino, let, I will kind of start my story with where we are at LinkedIn and go back into why we actually uh, um, decided to build Pino. Uh, most of you might not be aware of this, but uh, if you have used LinkedIn, and if you have used any of the products that are now like who viewed my profile or uh, article analytics or employee analytics or even talent insights, uh, there is a very high chance that you, you, would have, uh, you would have been interacting with Pino in the back end. Um, so across the entire LinkedIn, we have 70 plus products uh, being built. And uh, at any given second, we are seeing queries at 120,000 queries per second. And, and since this is user facing application, what this means is we have very stringent requirements on the latency that we provide. So even at this high throughput, uh, we make sure that the latency is in milliseconds to subsecond and majority of them are in less than 100 milliseconds range. Um, apart from the site facing applications, we, uh, Pino is also the de facto system where all the business metrics at LinkedIn get stored. So we have almost 10,000 business metrics and across which we, we see almost uh, 50,000 plus dimensions across these. We're very, very rich in dimensions. And this is kind of used on a day-to-day -day basis by product execs, analysts, uh, in order to uh, look at their product metrics and the growth metrics. Uh, last but not the least, uh, we also built another system for anomaly detection and root cause analysis called Third Eye. This is a self-serve platform where uh, users can actually set up uh, alerts on their business metrics and uh, the system automatically uh, triggers alerts whenever there is a deviation in the metric. And not only that, this, this goes one step further, uh, apart from telling the, uh, giving the alerts to the um, uh, users, it also helps in debugging them. So it kind of correlates a lot of other events within the company, such as experiments or deployments or any config changes and it brings all of these things into one place so that the, uh, the root cause analysis is much easier. So across LinkedIn, there are almost 50 plus teams that are using this, uh, this service and um, it, uh, it monitors almost 100,000 time series within LinkedIn. Let's, uh, while all these use cases are uh, kind of user facing, or uh, let's look at what happens behind the scenes. Uh, so pretty much all data from LinkedIn gets generated from the LinkedIn product that we all use, right? So there are two kinds of event uh, data you can, um, that gets generated. One is the event data, which is comes from all the activities that we perform, uh, such as liking an article, sharing an article, or connected to another member. 
and all these data goes into Apache Kafka, which is like the back, uh, the backbone or the central nervous system at LinkedIn. Um, and we also have the entity data, which is our profile data or uh, any articles that you publish, emails that you send, all those things get uh, stored in our uh, central NoSQL database, which is Espresso. From there, both this data, uh, both the event data and entity data um, makes it into Hadoop, which is our um, equivalent of Blob Store um, where on a periodic basis. Now, Pino has this capability of uh, ingesting this data either from Hadoop or in directly from Kafka. So depending on the use case, uh, we have a lot of them directly come from uh, point to Kafka and just uh, be able to query uh, query the data, or it can be computed on Hadoop and ingested into Pino. From there, we have this one, uh, we have various uh, ways of getting data out of Pino in, for consumption, be it uh, user-facing analytics or business analytics or anomaly detection. Um, outside, of, uh, outside of LinkedIn, there are many companies that use uh, Pino. And the biggest one, of course, is uh, Uber, which has not only uh, adopted Pino, but they're kind of stretching the boundaries of Pino and using it in, in uh, for use cases which we had never really thought about in the beginning. And uh, it's 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 uh, the the way they're pushing the boundaries, and which James and Hybo will talk about. It's it's just amazing. And thanks Uber for not only adopting it but also making it more awesome. So with that gets to the question, why did we build it? Um, so to answer this, it, it helps me get back to like where we were in 2014, right? And who viewed my profile or who is, is, was who already existed before we built Pino. And the stack looked something like this. So we had Kafka, we had the data in Hadoop, uh, but the stack that we used to serve who viewed my profile was based on Sensei and Bobo. Uh, most of you might not have heard this, but this is a wrapper and was open sourced by LinkedIn in um, last year, six years or seven years back. Um, but this is this was the system that is used was used to serve search uh, search at LinkedIn. Um, so we took this system and then we were able to um, put it together, make some changes to it, and we were able to serve this use case uh, using Sensei and Bobo. And uh, it was this was working fine, and there was I mean it was not the best, but it was solving our problems at that point. But something drastically changed in 2000, early 2014. Uh, we completely changed uh, who viewed my profile. Uh, most of you might remember this change. And uh, what this did was instead of showing just a line chart which shows the number of profile views, we started showing much richer data. So now you're not only knowing how many people viewed, but you can kind of get slicing and dicing and a lot more richer insights on this data. This was a huge success at LinkedIn. If a lot of people came back to LinkedIn, the engagement metrics were out of the charts and there were a lot of other metrics that showed a great improvement for LinkedIn. Well, the entire company was actually um, celebrating this success. For us, this was a nightmare uh, because we never expected this kind of a growth. Uh, all of a sudden, where we were doing hundreds of QPS, we went from 100 to thousands of queries per second. Um, we were not, not really prepared for this kind of a growth. Uh, we expanded the cluster. We pretty much had to go all the way to 1,000 nodes just to maintain the SLA since this is user-facing. So we wanted to keep the SLA in milliseconds. Um, we, in, even that, we had a lot of issues ma managing such a large cluster uh, because we had never done that. 1,000 node cluster was, the Helix was not there at that point. Uh, that um, uh, the Sensei and Bobo's uh, stack didn't use Helix. And we had to break up this cluster into multiple shards and then uh, the, uh, the, uh, the application team had to shard it based on member ID. Uh, there is not a single thing that we haven't tried to keep this cluster up and running. And we were all in code LO for, for a long time. And uh, I'll lay out a secret here. Uh, to be honest, most of us just wanted to kill this product and just go back to the batch mode. This is too much for us to deal with. Um, Luckily, this uh, uh, the management had a very different uh, idea about this, which is one of the key uh, amazing things about LinkedIn and what uh, what they told us like, hey, why don't you figure out a solution for this? 
because these metrics are amazing what we are seeing because of this product. Um, and this, if we can build a very good solution that can handle this kind of throughput uh, and still maintain low, low latency and still be efficient, uh, it is going to be a game changer for us. It's going to change a lot of, lot of things. We can build many more products. And this is where we began our journey. We said, let's go back to the drawing board, like figure out what, what exactly caused this issue, right? And we found like there were three main things um, that kind of um, got us to the state. Uh, the first one was, uh, it was, we took a search system. This was not really made for analytics. And most of you might be aware of this, that uh, search systems are uh, mainly bear, rely on inverted index. Uh, but the key difference there is once they do the filtering, they get the documents. They don't have to scan all the matching doc documents. At most, they have to get the top 100 or top 20. But that's not the case in analytics because once you find the matching, you have to scan all of them and you have to, um, uh, you have to uh, basically aggregate them. Right? So you, you, cannot, you cannot stop processing based on a time off. And uh, not only that, since it was so heavily relying on the inverted index, the query plan was also very fixed. So that means all the co code has to first look at the inverted index before the query processing even began. And we looked at other systems. I mean, Sensei was what we were using and Elasticsearch Druid. They all had the similar architecture where inverted index was a requirement. And that was what the queries were, uh, uh, query started working on. So the first thing that we tried to do here was uh, we said like, yes, there are some good components in this, but they're all tightly coupled. So we went back to the first principles and we said like, can we break this complex system into smaller pieces and then be able to assemble this on the fly uh, based on the query? That's kind of where we went and completely re-architected uh, Pino. So what we did here was break the system into three, uh, three different uh, phases, like the storage filter and the post filter. And we, we took the existing code and we also said that, hey, can we rewrite this completely and then break it up into different pieces? And columnar store, as we all know, is one of the most important things for analytics. So we picked that. We picked the byte encoding that was already there, inverted index and the scan. So this was the typical stack, but we kind of modularized it and then broke it up into different pieces. And on top of that, we added a bunch of uh, capabilities into Pino. So we, on the storage layer, we went from byte encoding to bit encoding and run length encoding. And then we added uh, scan based for filtering, sorted index. So we had a lot of, lot of different techniques, which we knew were going to help us in the query performance. Now, this was not sufficient for us because yes, you can have all these techniques, but the key thing that was, that is very different from in Pino is we have this flexible query planning layer. So what it means is we can pick and choose what we want to use on a per query basis by looking at the segment metadata and the query. So there is no fixed plan anymore, right? So this is one key thing to note here is this is different from the traditional planning, which is taking the logical query and then optimizing it. But in Pino, we are optimizing the physical plan at every segment. Um, I'll, I cannot talk about all the, all the different techniques here, but I'll uh, quickly talk about the sorted index because this is one of the most important things and gave us a lot of performance boost. Uh, there's not much, uh, nothing new here in terms of the sorted index. This is a very, very old uh, uh, technique uh, where before even inverted index came into existence where sorting was actually much people realized sorting the data is much better than uh, trying to use inverted index. Uh, so we uh, we took the same technique and then we automatically do the sorting with, uh, in, within Pino which gives us very good compression and spatial locality. You can see the difference uh, from the performance where with inverted index and sorted index this is kind of counterintuitive uh, even well, it was counterintuitive for us, but the data showed that uh, um, uh, sorted index is much better. Uh, the second one is uh, uh, the starter index. This is this by itself is a pretty uh, deep topic, uh, but one key thing that I want to focus on here is um, you have this uh, concept of being keeping the data raw and uh, doing the aggregation on the fly, 
versus computing the aggregation, all the aggregations uh, upfront. So we call it pre-cubing in, in the uh, standard database terminology. So what Pinot does uh, is kind of a in-between thing. So it has this capability of being from uh, going from one extreme to other, depending on what kind of latency that you're looking for. So you can say that I don't want to scan anything. I want the answer to come, just scan one record. So you can set the threshold as T equals one, or if it is infinity, it just acts as uh, um, like query in uh, computing the aggregations on the fly. So this, um, uh, we had this amazing thing where you can control your latency and, uh, and uh, also be able to trade off based on space. So this is kind of the, what we see. Uh, you can actually go from what we could go up to only up to 10 QPS in particular uh, scenarios, we can actually go up to hundreds of uh, queries per second with Startly. So let's go back and see what we accomplished by doing all these things. So at 2000, on 2014, when we had uh, this use case, we had 1,000 nodes and we had 1,500 queries per second. And at that point, um, LinkedIn had around close to 200 um, million members. And fast forward today, uh, to, uh, um, we have just 75 nodes uh, serving this uh, um, use case. And not only that, you now the queries have gone up to 5,000 queries per second. And LinkedIn is almost approaching like 700 million members. And uh, this is the kind of improvement that we saw by kind of completely uh, rewriting uh, everything and then adding more components and building this flexible query planning layer within Pino, right? And the best part of this is we achieved all these things and uh, the who viewed my profile use case actually runs without inverted index. Right. And then there is absolutely no caching that is required, which means every time you uh, you, uh, you look at your uh, who viewed my profile page, it's actually making a query to Pino. And overall, you can see like it's a 45x improvement from where we started. Um, um, in at a very high level, uh, we did some comparison with uh, Druid, which is the closest system to to Pino. And what you can see here is it's very obvious uh, from the graphs on the right side uh, that uh, while Druid does well in the, in the initial stages as the throughput increases, it, it kind of uh, shoots up. This is kind of what we saw in 2014 as well when we were using the search, um, search based systems, uh, which was Sensei and uh, Bobo. Um, and even on the other side, if you look at it, for uh, we we ran 5,000 queries, uh, uh, which is in single threaded. That means one after the other. This was not throughput based. So to run these queries, Pino kind of took 11 minutes, uh, whereas uh, Druid took 24 minutes. By by looking at individual queries, is like 84 to 130 136 milliseconds. You may not see that as a big difference, uh, but from a cost to so perspective, this is huge because you can now serve a lot more queries with the same set of hardware with Pino than with uh, Druid. Uh, to, to summarize here, we kind of uh, want to touch base on one unique point uh, that, uh, that we achieved at LinkedIn, which is we, uh, we were able to serve these multi a variety of use cases, right? whether it be user-facing application or business-facing metrics or anomaly detection, where you kind of have varying uh, variety of workloads. One is very, very high throughput. You are showing your, uh, showing the analytics to the end users. And uh, the other one is like analytics to internal, or it is machine query, machine generated queries, right? Which can be bursty. Uh, earlier before Pino, you know, we had to have three different systems to solve these three use cases. And what we achieved at, at LinkedIn is we now were able to merge all these use cases and have Pino as the back you know, one single platform to serve all these use cases. This helps a lot in terms of data consistency as well, because you don't now have to keep the data in multiple systems. And it also helps in uh, reducing the operations overhead. So now you're not having to maintain um, many different systems here. 